everybody. How you doing? I'm Cherie. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing good today. I'm having a good day so far, but it's very early in the morning, so we'll see how the day goes, but I think I'll be doing okay. Um, Got to do a few things today. Maybe make some potato soup and stuff like that. Sounds good. I make a good cheesy potato soup. It's really yummy. So it feels it's cold here. This morning it was 18. And I'm a little snuffleupagus, so excuse my voice. I'm a little stuffy. But it's early in the morning, so as the day goes on, that'll go away, I guess. But <clears throat> anyways, we're doing the book of Luke this month, and today's the 12th. So we will be reading chapter 12 in Luke. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. That's the one that I read out of most of the time. Um... I might switch it up between, I just happen to think of this, I might switch it up between NLT and NIV. Uh, that way, uh, you know, you might have one or the other versions. Uh, but it's very easy to read along with either one of those, with whatever version you've got. Uh, if you want to, in the comments, let me know what version you've been reading out of and what versions you like the best. Um, my favorites are the New King James Version and the NLT. Then I would say it would be NIV, Amplified, you know, I like all those, but <clears throat> the NLT is easy to understand, New Living Translation, and it's easy to understand. So I usually go to this one, which is the NLT. This is the Everyday Matters Bible for Women. I love this Bible. I had to duct tape mine because it was starting to fall apart because it's paperback, but that's okay. You can duct tape a paperback, and it'll last forever, too, so, you know. Don't think you have to buy leather and all that, because you don't. You can buy paperback. And this lasted me a good while, and then all I had to do is tape over it. I used packing tape uh, and taped over it. It's no big deal. It's fine. And plus, you got Bible covers. You can slip it in a Bible cover. So don't think you can't have a Bible because you have to have leather. You can. It don't matter. Okay? And you can even get them online. At, I mean, uh, read your Bible <clears throat> online on like the Bible Gateway app or something like that. You know, so there's really no excuse much not to have a Bible or be able to read a Bible. A lot of churches give them out. Uh, you can find them at Goodwill. I've took several to Goodwill. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know what made me get off on that. But anyhow, <laughs> I might try to switch it up to get it. I've not even looked at Luke 12 yet, so I don't really know how long of a book it is. So, let's see here. I wanted to get this in today before my day got going very good because I've got a lot I've got to be doing today. And uh, anyway, I wanted to make sure I got my reading in and I wanted to do it with you all because I love doing it with you all. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is a good size one. I think I'll read part of the New Living and part of the. I think this is NIV. Yeah, NIV. I've got my Quest Study Bible. And uh, I've got two or three of these Bibles. This is a good study Bible if you ever have a chance to get one, if you don't have a good study Bible. Okay. A, war uh, a warning about hypocrisy is my subtitle. Uh, chapter 12, the book of Luke. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until... <laughs> Y'all got to tell you this first. I look down here and Gizmo's laying at my feet like he's a kid listening to somebody read him a story. It is so cute. He's got his little hot dog toy down here and he's just laying there. He's got his little paws turned under him and he's just laying there listening. <laughs> I wish I could get the camera down there on him, but I don't know if you can see. I know if I move that camera, he'll move. But it's so cute. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Ugh. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. Wow, those are some powerful words right there. Mm -mm -mm. Um, I'm going to read that again. That, that really is good. Um, 
Dear friends, verse 4, Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. Mm -hmm. What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? I didn't read that right. What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. I tell you the truth, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man, will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when you are brought to trial in the synagogues, and before rulers and authorities, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. Here's the parable of the rich fool. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. You hear that? Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, What should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns. And yes, I lick my finger because it's my own germs tear down my barn and build a bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth that not have a rich relationship with God. Wow, that is so true. I tell you, we accumulate so much stuff, it's ridiculous, really. Most of us do. And I'm not even saying it has to be great stuff. I mean, just stuff. And, you know, cleaning out stuff and everything, you realize, oh my gosh, I did not realize I even had this. I didn't realize I had this much stuff. Uh, what was I even thinking? And then I bought this twice. Didn't even remember I had it the first time. You know, um, it's crazy. And we're all guilty of it, no matter what kind of stuff it is. So, uh, you know, um, every now and then we need to go through and clean house. You know, and we need to clean house in our lives, too, sometimes. Okay, in verse 22, i tell you what. Let me switch over. Now, I'll read a little bit more in the NLT. And then I'm going to switch over in verse 35 to the NIV, okay? Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? That's Gizmo and his toy. <laughs> That's the noisiest one he's got. Oh my goodness. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers, that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. And <clears throat> but your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And he will give you everything you need. Now, that's not to say we can sit down 
on the job or whatever in our life and just expect God to do stuff for us. You know, he'll provide, he'll provide. Yes, he will, but you have to do your part too. You, he gave us the means and the ability to do lots of things. Some things we can't do, some things we can do. But you have got to realize you have to do your part. You can't just sit back and expect God to do everything uh, in your life. If you're able to do something, you need to do it. If you can't do one thing, but you're equipped to do something else, at least do something in your life, you know. Um, and that makes you feel better about yourself, you know. And don't be concerned about what to eat or what to drink. Don't worry about such things. Verse 30. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your Father already knows your needs. Okay, here we go again. 31. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven, and the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it, and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Now, I'm going to switch over to verse 35 in the NIV. If you all like me switching over, let me know. And if you don't like this, if this is annoying, just let me know and I won't do it again. And I thought it might help get more people, uh, whatever Bibles you're all reading from, that it might help you read along in yours a little better if I read out of the one that you have. But, I mean, I can't hit all of them every time, but I'll do what I can. Okay, verse 35, uh, watchfulness. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. We'll have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at the hour when you do not expect him. That is true. We can plan and plan and plan. And it's just like my cousin told me, we make plans and God laughs because we have no idea what's going to happen. We can plan and plan and sometimes they happen. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes the things you think you're going to know when it's going to happen, happens at a different time. Uh, it's a loss of a loved one or whatever. You know, you worry about it. You try to plan it out in your head, you know, as to, you know, you know, if they end up in a nursing home or something, you know, and then we've got to do this, this, and this. No, uh, we don't know. From one second to, I mean, I could do something, I could pass away while I'm doing this video. I don't know what God has in store for me. So, you know, we've just got to be aware that things can happen to us at any time. We just don't know. Okay, verse 41. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Did I read that wrong? Yeah, it will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming, and then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. You've got to always be ready. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. 
From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constant I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other. Three against two, and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son, and son against father. Mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled on the way, or your adversary may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. And that is your reading in chapter 12. Um, I hope you all are doing okay today, and I hope you continue to have a good day. Uh, I pray that blessings come upon you and that your day goes well. Um, I am not, uh, let's see, I guess I'll have to do the 13th. I might do a few readings today and just post them on the days uh, that they are. I don't know. Um, let's see. I was trying to think of what I've got going on this week. Um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I'll try to get a posting up for tomorrow. And uh, on and on. But it's it's a hectic time. I read it. Sometimes I don't hook up my video and stuff because I, I just, well, I don't know. I just don't either have the time to do it or, um, I, I don't know. I'm just not in the mood to do it. I don't know what to tell you on that. But <laughs> there's just days I feel good and days I don't. But I try to get one up on this reading every day. I think I've missed a couple days so far. But all in all, I think we're all doing pretty good. Uh, oh, look at my little Santa Claus earrings. Ain't they cute? Can you see his little feet like he's a little dancing? Ain't he cute? Ain't he cute? I think he's cute. I love my little Santa Claus. Then I got this junk jewelry a beaded chain. <laughs> That's my Walmart specials right here. <laughs> I went to Walmart yesterday and bought a few things. Um... Let's see, what else is going on? Uh, Christmas dinner. What do you all do for Christmas dinner? Uh, I think this year we're going to have ham. And I think uh, I'm going to try to make a broccoli casserole. I had a recipe years ago, and I've lost it along the way. And it was a good broccoli casserole recipe. I don't know if it's Betty Crocker or what it is. And I've looked at recipes and looked at recipes, and I don't know if I've ever found it. It didn't have rice in it. I'm not uh, fond of rice in it. Um, but it had the cans of soup and stuff in it. I might still keep on looking. I might find one. But anyway, I like broccoli casserole. Uh, I make a good cabbage casserole. And I'll tell you that. And if you don't like cabbage, you're like, ugh. I'm going to tell you, you won't even know there's cabbage in it. It is so good. It's got cheese in it and everything. It is delicious. And I might make that. Um, mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes. You always have to have sweet potatoes. <laughs> always, 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 always sweet potatoes. <laughs> I make good sweet potatoes, too. I, I wish they was easier to peel and cut up. Cutting them up makes me nervous because they're a real hard potato. And cutting them, you got to really put some force behind it. I'm always afraid I'm going to get cut. And sometimes my dad will do it. He'll say, I'll cut the potatoes. <laughs> he knows I'm afraid to cut them. Sometimes Oscar will, too. But uh, I can be brave. But I cut them into. I watched a recipe on YouTube the other day. I think it was yesterday, actually. Anyway, this lady uh, was doing them in an Instant Pot. That's another thing. I think an Instant Pot is a new glorified name for a pressure cooker. I might be wrong on that, but I mean, I think it's the same concept. Uh, but anyways, uh, she did her sweet potatoes in an Instant Pot, and they got really done. I think in 10 minutes, I think it was. She said 12 if frozen, or I don't remember. But anyway, she did them, I think, in 10 minutes in an Instant Pot. And uh, they were really getting, you know, they were done. But uh, she cut hers like in slices, you know, and I usually do mine in quarters, like, you know, big hunks of sweet potato, you know, and uh, 
I guess maybe she did that so they'd cook quicker. I don't know, but I'd say in that kind of pot, you'd probably do them in quarters. They'd still do good. Maybe do them 12 minutes or something. Um, but anyway, I just wondered if you all used the Instant Pot and stuff and what you like in it and uh, and stuff like that. I've been trying to get some new recipes going. Uh, I want to start cooking more. I, I cook more in the fall and the winter than I do in the spring and summer. And... Uh, you all have sent me recipes before. I appreciate it. I've still got them. Um, so anyway, everybody's always up for new recipes and everything. Um, let's see. So anyway, we're going to have that. And sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes. I'll probably have some corn. Um, I think that's what we're going to have. Uh, desserts. Uh, my dad has a... Uh, well, no, that apple cake will be gone by then. We had an auction at church Sunday school thing the other day, and uh, Dad bought an apple cake that the lady had made. I know it's going to be good. We haven't even ate it yet. He's bringing half of it over today, so <sighs> I'll be porking out pretty good. <laughs> so, anywho, um, other than that, I might make a peanut butter pie or something. And I love uh, Marie Callender pies. Uh, they're fruit pies. I don't like their custards and stuff like that very well, but I like their peach pies good, apple pies good, and Marie Callender. I think they're real good. Um, let's see. That's about all I can think of right now. I guess my daughter and kids might be over for Christmas. Um, let's see. He keeps touching my neck, and I feel like I have a hair on me, which I could have. <laughs> um... Let's see. That's all I can think of right now. But tell me what your all's plans are. Y'all can share if you want to. Uh, what your plans are. What you have for Christmas dinner. You might give us some ideas of stuff we've not even thought of. Some years we just do a total opposite Christmas dinner. We just have something that we're craving. Like uh, fried chicken, sweet potatoes, cornbread, mashed potatoes, gravy. Or something like that. You know, uh, soup, beans, and cornbread. Uh, oyster stew. Uh, we just do all kinds of different stuff sometimes for Christmas. But... We went out to eat for Thanksgiving, and it really, it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. It was okay. It was it was good. What disappointed me was I called and asked if they were going to have ham, and they said they were. And me and Mom, I'm sorry, me and Dad and Oscar um, went to eat, and they didn't have ham. They had turkey. My daddy don't like turkey. My daddy don't like turkey. <laughs> so, that was a big fat flop. So... <laughs> I was so disappointed. I'm like, oh, no, I've just ruined it. But then he went later on and ate at my aunt and uncle's house, or at my cousin's house, and had a big feed. So he was fine. He got his ham and all the shebang of everybody's home cooking. So it, it ended out on a good note, but it started out on not a so good note. But anyway, so I figured we'd have ham on Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, you can share with us on here what you have for your Christmas dinners or what you all tradition, what your all's traditions are and different things like that. I didn't mean for this video to be so long. I'm so sorry, but it's all for a good cause and we all read the book of God and you can't go wrong with that. So remember to live, love, laugh and laugh some more because laughter is the best medicine. And I will see you all back here real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.